G'day everyone, I'm Percy from toptechskills.com and today we're taking a look at the terminal. I think being effective in the terminal is an absolutely necessary skill for all developers. If you can't use it effectively, you're going to be limited to GUI tools or you're going to spend hours doing something that should take you minutes. In this video, I'm going to give you an absolute beginner introduction to the macOS terminal, also called the command line. All right, let's jump in. So here we are in macOS. We currently have nothing open, but we want to jump straight into the terminal. I've got it in my dock. If you don't have it in your dock, you can find it in the utilities folder. I'm going to open up by clicking on it, drag it to make it slightly bigger, and let's have a look at what we can see in the terminal. On the left-hand side, we have what's called the prompt. This is going to be slightly different from computer to computer, but in general, it's going to end in a dollar sign. If you're doing tutorials online and they give you some examples of things to do in the command line, usually they'll represent this whole prompt with the dollar sign. So I see a lot of beginner developers copy the dollar sign as well. That's not right. You should just copy what comes after because the dollar sign just represents this prompt. On the right hand side, we have what's called the cursor, this little gray square, and that just shows where you can start typing. I'm going to start typing there and you see it pop up on the screen. I'll delete all that. And in order to get started with the terminal, let's find out where we are and we'll open up a finder window so we can actually see what's going on. To find out where we are in the terminal, we're going to use a command called PWD, which stands for Print Working Directory. So I'll hit enter now and you'll see that the directory it's printed out is the top tech skills directory within the users directory. In order to visualize it a little bit better because you're just getting started with the terminal, I'm gonna open this directory, I've copied that with command C, so command C there, and I've pasted it in the terminal with command V. I'll hit enter here to open it, and you'll see a little finder window pop up to the right hand side. So, what we see on the right hand side is actually where we are in the terminal. The big difference being that in finder we can actually see all of the directories where we are, but in terminal we can't. So, let's do that in the terminal, let's see what we have in the directory that we currently are. We're going to use a command called ls, which is short for list. If I type ls and hit enter, you'll see that it prints out all of the directories in the directory we are now. And you'll, if you count them up and have a look at them, you'll see that they match up totally to what we have here in Finder. We have applications, desktop, documents, etc. You can see here applications, desktop, documents. So, now that we can see that we have the same directories here, let's move between them using the terminal. In Finder, the way that we'd move between directories is potentially to double click it, depending on your view setting up here. So I'm gonna navigate into the movies directory. In Finder, I'll double click it. In the terminal, how would we do this? We use a command called CD. CD is short for change directory. So since I've changed the movies directory in Finder, let's also do that in the terminal. CD and I'm going to type out movies. And we get some feedback here. We can see that the tilde has changed to movies, which shows that we've changed directory. But let's use a command that we've already studied to work out if we've actually changed directories. I'm gonna type PWD, hit enter, and you'll see, yes, we are in the movies directory inside Top Tech Skills, inside users. And in Finder, we can see that we have three video files in there, MKVs. And we also know a command that will allow us to confirm what files we have in the terminal. I'm gonna type ls, hit enter, and you'll see that those three movies come up when we hit ls. So now let's go back to where we were. In Finder, we'd hit the back button and that would take us to the parent directory here. In the terminal, how would we do this? Well, there are a couple of different ways, but I'm gonna show you a way that is the quickest. In the terminal, what we're going to do to go back up to the previous directory is do cd dot dot. I'll hit enter there, type pwd to confirm where we are, and you can see, yes, we've moved out from the movies directory to back to the top tech skills directory. So you might be a little bit confused what dot dot actually means. Well, dot dot means the parent directory of the current directory that we're in. So if we were to run that again, for example, in our top tech skills directory here, if I typed cd dot dot, I would expect it to take me to the users directory. I'll give it a try, cd dot dot. And now if I type pwd, you'll see, yes, we've actually changed to the users directory from top tech skills. There's another little one that is cd dot, 
Now, if we run that, we type pwd again, you'll see that we haven't changed directory at all. And that's because dot means the current directory. So what we've done by typing cd and then dot is we've told terminal to change to our current directory, which will have no effect. So that dot dot and the single dot are little shortcuts to reference the parent directory or the current directory. My screen's become a little bit messy with all these commands. So what I'm gonna do at the moment is type clear to clear my screen. And we have a nice clean screen here. So if you're wondering where all your stuff went, it's just been pushed down, but sometimes you'll be in a situation where you just like the screen to be clean again so you can focus. And that's what the clear command is for. There's another way to do that on a Mac, you would hit command K. So I'm gonna type PWD to get some output again. And if I hit Command K, you'll see that it has the same effect as running clear. Now this is a really useful little shortcut that I use pretty frequently. Now let's start making some files. Before I make some files, because I'm currently in the users directory, I wanna change back to the directory where we started, which is the one that we have open in Finder over here, our top tech skills directory and users. A quick way to change back to our home directory which is the user's top tech skills directory, is to use another little shortcut in the terminal, which is tilde. I'm gonna type cd and then tilde. Now, if you're not familiar with tilde, you can access that by holding shift and pressing the key to the left of your one key. And that's going to print this little tilde. Now, if I hit enter, you'll see that we've changed to tilde over here. And what this represents is, when you hit pwd, the user's top tech skills directory. It means the home directory of the user that's currently logged in. I'm gonna hit Command K to clear the screen and we're back to a nice clean screen. Let's create a new file. To create a new file, we're going to use the touch utility. I'm gonna to type touch and then test underscore file dot txt, hit enter. As you can see in the finder window, we've had a new file appear there, testfile.txt. We'll confirm that in the terminal by typing ls, the command we studied before. Hit enter, and yep, you can see at the end we have testfile.txt appear there. If we type open, test, and then if I hit tab here, you're going to see something pop up. You can see that the rest of the file name has completed itself. That's called tab completion. If you start typing a file or folder in your terminal, and it's specific enough that the terminal knows exactly what you're talking about, it can autocomplete what you've typed. So just as a quick example, if I typed open and then P and hit tab, nothing's going to come up. And that's because we have both pictures and public in there and terminal doesn't know which one to actually go to. If I hit tab again, it's going to show us the two options. Now, if I type PI, none of the other directories start with PI, and if I hit tab again, it's going to autocomplete to pictures. So that's tab completion. That's a pro tip for you. That's gonna save you a whole lot of time and prevent a whole lot of mistakes. So because there's only actually one file starting with P, if I just type T and hit tab, it's going to autocomplete testfile.txt. Hit enter to open it, and you'll see it opens up here in text edit. I'm gonna type a little message here, hello world. I'm gonna save it with Command S, quit out of here with Command Q. So the reason I showed you that is I'm going to demonstrate a little tool in the terminal that you can use to quickly edit text files or any file that is like text, like HTML, right in the terminal. So we're gonna use a little tool called Nano to open up the test file. Again, I'm just gonna type T, hit Tab, Enter. And you'll see that our nice little Nano editor has popped up in our terminal. Now, I'm gonna tell you that you shouldn't be using the mouse in here. If I select this and start pressing delete with the selection, it's not going to work. It's only based off the cursor, that little gray thing that you see moving around there. So I'm gonna hit enter at the end of the line and type another message to prove that we can actually edit a file within Nano. I'll type hello top tech skills, exclamation mark. Now. Command S isn't gonna work down here, so we'll look at the commands at the bottom of the screen. So what's this? This little hat here is called a carrot. That's the name of the character, but what that represents on your keyboard is the control key. So not the command key on a Mac, the control key. Control G for get help, control O for write out, which actually means save, control R for read file, etc. So what we wanna do right now is we wanna save, so I'm gonna hit control O and you'll you'll see that Nano has asked us for what file name we wanna save it as. Because we don't wanna create a duplicate, we wanna overwrite. The file name that it gives us is going to be fine. I'll hit enter, and you'll see that it wrote two lines, which means it saved our two-line file. 
We're going to exit out of Nano by hitting Control X. And there we go, we're back to the terminal. So let's confirm that we actually edited our file. Let's open it up again with our text editor. Now I can see that two commands ago, I've run the open command with testfile.txt and that's exactly what I want to do now. So a little pro tip for you again, if you want to move through your history in the terminal, hit up. So I've just hit the up arrow key and you'll see that it's taken me to the previous command. If I hit up again, it's going to take me to the command before that. Hitting down moves back down and eventually I'm back down to the blank command line. So that's a really quick way to just navigate through the history of your commands. And if you actually want to see what this is scrolling through, you can use the history command. If I hit enter here, you'll see that I have all of my previous commands in there and that's what I'm moving through. So if I hit up, I hit history, 98 there, uh, 97 there is nano and then open. So this is the command that I want to run. And actually, let me just clean that up. Hit Command K, as we studied before. Open testfile.txt. Now, you can see that the little alert that we wrote in there first is there, and the one that we added in Nano is also there. So that just demonstrates that you can also edit text files directly in the command line very quickly and easily. Click Command Q to exit out of that, and Command K to clear my screen. So we don't really have any need for the test file anymore. Let's delete it. To delete a file, we're going to use the RM tool. RM stands for remove. RM, and then we'll start typing test, and again, we'll hit tab to autocomplete it, hit enter, and you'll see in the finder window over here, our test file has disappeared. We'll confirm in the terminal by running ls, and you'll see that test file is no longer there where it was previously. Let's start playing around with directories. How would we make a directory in here? I'm gonna type mkdir, which is short for make directory, and I'm gonna call it test underscore directory. Hit enter. And you'll see that test directory has popped up in the right hand side in our finder window. Let's confirm that in the terminal by running ls, the command we studied before, and yes, you'll see that test directory has appeared in there. So let's use the tools we learned before to manipulate stuff within test directory without changing into it. So based on what we learned before, we know that we could go CD, test, hit tab to change into test directory, and we could touch testfile.txt. Now, we can see in Finder what we've done here is that we've created a test file within test directory. We'll ls here to confirm that, and pwd to confirm where we are. Now, we don't need to change into that directory to create that file in the terminal. So what we'll do is we'll remove that file with rm, like we learned before. rm stands for remove, remove testfile.txt, and what we're going to do is we're going to go back up to the directory where we were, cd dot dot that we learned before, which is going to take us up one directory, pwd to confirm where we are, ls to confirm what we can see. So what I want to do is I want to use touch, but I want to create a file in test directory from here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start typing test, hit tab, that's going to autocomplete test directory. Now I'm going to type testfile.txt, hit enter. And you'll see that in Finder, we've had the test file get created within test directory. And we can check that from here. If we type ls with nothing behind it, it's going to show us our current directory. Let's type ls and let's type test directory. All right, so I've just auto-completed that with tab, hit enter. So we can create files, we can list files from within another directory. What we're gonna do as well is we're gonna use mkdir to create another directory within test directory. So I've typed mkdir test directory forward slash and we'll call this test directory two, hit enter. And you'll see immediately in Finder over here, test directory two has appeared within test directory. And we can do all of the things that we did before. We can open the file with open test directory forward slash test. Ah, and you'll see I hit tab there and because I've got something that starts with test underscore, the terminal doesn't know which one I want to open. I'll hit tab again to see the options that it's giving me and I want to open test file, not test directory. So I'll hit tab there to open test file. You'll see that that comes up in our text editor. Let's just type some junk in there, save, quit, and we'll open up with nano as well. Test directory, I'll hit tab, forward slash test underscore F, tab, 
and you'll see there in Nano, we have opened the same file. I'm gonna quit out of that without saving. I'll just hit Control X directly, no changes, so it's not gonna ask me to save. So the reason that I've shown you that is to show you that within the terminal, you don't actually have to be in a directory in order to deal with the files. You just have to tell the terminal how you wanna access the file. So now that we've done all that, I want to delete the test directory and obviously I wanna delete what's inside it as well. So I wanna delete test directory two and test file when I delete test directory. So we studied rm before, rm, and then we'll type test underscore directory, hit enter, and we've received an error message. So rm is very helpfully telling us that test directory is a directory. So what that means is that we've typed the wrong command. rm, when you're deleting a directory, expects an option. So we're gonna type the option dash r, which stands for recursive, and that's the way we delete directories. rm-r, we'll type test directory, hit enter, and you'll see in Finder, our folder and all of the containing files and folders have been deleted. And a word of warning, rm does not send stuff to the trash. It actually deletes it directly, so be very careful with it, or just delete things that you know that you don't need to get back. And now we're back to where we started. We're in the top tech skills directory. We have all of our test files and test folders have been deleted and we've done a full circle. So I hope that you are now comfortable with navigating around your computer, creating, editing, deleting files and doing the same with folders. Thanks for watching. I really hope you found that video useful. Feel free to comment below with any questions or feedback. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more videos from toptechskills.com. Thanks again and see you next time.